Hello, my name is Sebastian, and welcome to the Galactic Sea Bass Channel. Thanks for watching this video today. If you're clicking on this, then you're probably interested in stand up comedy. Maybe you've done it once before, maybe you've done it a couple times, maybe you're just thinking about it. I don't know what the case is. However, if you're watching this, I want to talk to you about how it feels to do 100 stand up sets. So, I started doing stand up comedy uh, November 2021. I was working at the Madhouse Comedy Club in downtown San Diego and they offer the employees the chance to just pop in and do three minutes per shift. So I gave it, I want to say, 12 tries from November to December and then I took a break and two months later in February I tried five minutes at this wild spot that they called the Rassel House here in Ocean Beach and I bombed bombed really bad for pretty much the entire five minutes. I remember there was a few laughs at the last 20 seconds, but they were pity laughs, I feel. And that really took a toll on me, so I just stopped. I stopped for eight months. And then October 24th, 2022, I did my 13th, excuse me, my 14th try. And from then on out, I've just been doing it every day. There's a great Ralphie May masterclass, like a stand-up masterclass, available on YouTube. If you just put Ralphie May stand-up masterclass, it'll pop up. Um, it's great. An hour, 45 minutes of gold. Uh, there's the whole aspect of social media that doesn't get taken into regard, but that's fine. There's still so much, so many good tips. First of all, don't wear a hat on stage. <laughs> um, it's cool, though, man. So basically... There's a piece of advice that for the first 90 days, you should just go every day, hit as many spots as you can. So I've been trying to do just that. And from October 24th, 2022 to today, which is January 27th, 2023, um, tonight I'll be doing my 115th, 114th attempt to stand up, which is pretty cool. So that's a giant margin between 14 and 114. And going on stage every day really how do you put it it feels good I like being on stage I've always sort of been a performer you know I've gotten into trouble throughout my whole school period and I always went for the laugh and you know sometimes you go for the laugh and it works and you get a laugh or you go for the laugh and you don't and it's embarrassing and people laugh at you and I've been the subject of both of those things for a long time. I heard this amazing quote, I don't know who originally said it, but I heard Mark Norman say, people do stand up so you can control how people laugh at you. I may have paraphrased that slightly, but there's a great um, element of beauty in that quote. You know, I've, I've always been a clown and it feels good to kind of be in control of how people laugh. Um, it's really important to write every day, write every single day. If you think of something funny, that's where a joke starts. It's just you thinking it's funny in your head. Write it down, and then you can keep elaborating on that writing and adding tags and getting a better punchline and eliminating words that you don't need so you don't say uh, uh, or and like, mmm. Those words are fillers on stage, and if you're saying that stuff, that means that your joke isn't comprised perfectly and can always, always be putting work into your jokes. I heard Ralphie say, if you think your jokes are done, you're done. You should just quit. So, that's, I didn't say it, but that's good advice. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Go out every day. There's comedy clubs around you for sure. If you're in like a smaller part of town, you can always start your own. Get it together, like a bar or something just one night a week. And, uh, get it going. But if you do have available actual comedy clubs, definitely hit those as much as you can. Sign up for the open mics, write material, get better at that material, get it better, keep writing stuff, and then figuring out how to transition stuff into the other jokes. It's it's cool. It's all just this process, this game. No one really knows how to write. I've heard everybody thinks that somebody else has got it figured out, but nobody really has it figured out. Basically, just write what you think is funny. The two rules to comedy are get on stage and be funny. So that's all you really have to do. And it feels good. You know, I've been going through a lot in my life recently. You know, there's turmoil with my family. I went through a bad breakup. 
and therapy is really expensive. You know, I, 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 I'm doing it and I'm trying, but getting on stage and being able to talk about your problems and having people laugh at some of the predicaments that you're facing in your life actually feels really good. It's therapeutic. It's a good feeling and you're helping other people, you're helping yourself. It, it's a great route. If you've ever thought about doing stand-up and you just have that little, like, I don't know, I don't know if it's right for me. Like, I think I'm pretty funny, just go do it. Just get on stage and do it. I had a guy at the bar last night I was talking to, he's an old friend of mine. He said, hey, do you want to hear my comedy album? I said, do you have an album? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And literally just starts reading notes off of his phone, non-prepared notes. One of them was like, PTSTD. That was the entire joke. Like, yes, it's a premise, it's funny, but it's not an album by any means. You have so much work to do. So if you have some funny thoughts, like definitely get out and try them. And you'll never know if they work until you get on stage and do it. And then when you do that, you know, that's when you can get better and start leveling up. So a few accomplishments I've amassed in this time frame of technically four months. Uh, I've had two booked showcase spots. Um, hosted the Laugh Factory on Friday the 13th and got paid for it. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Leah. Shouts out. Um, and uh, that's there's going to be a second show coming up soon. And then I have another showcase performance on February 8th. So it's pretty cool. Like just slowly you level up, you put your time in. Go bark for the clubs, um, network, meet people, make friends, be nice, be kind, be genuine. You know, that's the only way that you could ever make it in this game is to just be authentically yourself. If you're trying to be somebody else, what's the point, you know? Um, when you get on stage, you know, you have about 30 seconds for them to like you or dislike you. So try opening up with a little bit about yourself. Um, you know, a little bit goes a long way. Honesty and integrity are very crucial and people can tell if you're faking it up there, you know So it's good to just keep it real and Just talk about what you genuinely think is funny. I had this incredible conversation with Big J Okerson on New Year's Eve and this was probably one of the most prolific pieces of advice that I've been given in the comedy world so far So I'm very happy to share that with you today we were talking about an older time in his career where he was five years into comedy, and he was opening up for Patrice O'Neill, rest in peace to one of the greats. Um, maybe the greatest to ever do it, besides Carlin. And my Mount Rushmore is like 19 people, so I'm not going into that. Anyway, he's five years into comedy, he's opening up for Patrice O'Neill, who's 15 years into comedy at the time. And he's telling me about how he's doing a lot of self-deprecating, you know, fat material. They're both heavy, he heavy set dudes. And the game of telephone got played to the point where Patrice, by the time he got on stage, he didn't want to do his jokes because Big J had already done them. And that wasn't what he said. It was just how the words got thrown around back to, and that's what, so Big J heard that. And then he thought, man, you know, that's, I don't want to be taking his material. Like I was just talking about like what I had to say. And eventually Patrice called him back and said, hey, I'm not mad at you. You know, you, you're, you can do what you can do the jokes that you want to do. That's fine. They're, you know, if you, if you want to do such self-deprecating material, that's okay. But, you know, I'm an artist and I have more to say than just fat jokes. And that got him thinking like, well, I want to have more to say, which is really cool. And I got him writing more and trying to be more prolific and profound and that like launched his career, like where he's at now, he's huge. And... That was pretty cool. He talks about... This was the coolest thing he told me. When you're having a conversation with your friend and you're just laughing about some random thing that you never thought would get brought up or whatever, it just happens in the moment and you find yourself laughing to the point where you can't breathe and your friend's laughing to the point you can't breathe. You didn't go over there with a notepad. Like You didn't go over there with like little clips and quips. Like, I'm going to talk about the weather. I'm going to talk about this fish I saw at the aquarium. It just, it just happens. And you find yourself in this moment of purity and just laughter and happiness. It's amazing. So you're spending somewhere between five and 20 years doing a full circle back to the point where you are 
you again and the audience is your friend and you're just having this bantery conversation that you're not thinking too hard about it's just happening um it's pretty cool so it takes a long time to actually become a comedian and you have to find your voice you know if you start speaking to the truth about what you have to say then your audience when they hear it then if they are with you then they'll keep coming to you because you're always going to be you you're always going to have your own opinion and um you know he was saying stuff along the lines of you know like think of jeff foxworthy like boom you can see his audience just by me saying that or jim gaffigan you can see his audience and those are uh i picked two very white examples but um it's a, whatever anyway you can see because of who they are and what they spoke about and were true to themselves, like their audience reciprocated with that and they have these big audiences that are with them forever. It's pretty cool. Um, like Chappelle's got that. I mean, Fluffy's got that. There's all kinds of great examples of people that just stuck to themselves, said what was true, and then once you find like your base, then your your base audience will grow and other people will kind of venture on into it. And to, like Obviously, a comedy should be for everybody. You shouldn't make comedy that's like, specific for one kind of people like what's the joke is that regard i mean that that's a very specific example but comedy is just like you're making other people happy while you're talking about things that you think are funny and everybody's winning it's a good time if you have a good show it feels so good and if you bomb whatever then go do it again because you're going to bomb a lot if you think you're not going to bomb your hot stuff Get prepared, bucko, because things are going to get crazy. People are going to hate you sometimes. Even if you bring... You'll have one show where your jokes are fire. They're they're hitting. Everybody's laughing. It's perfect. You go to the next show, the same jokes. The same cadence. It, it falls flat. And then you're just, why? I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. Like, that's just comedy. That's the game. And I tell you, after a hundred... After 114 tries, I know this video is 100 tries, but it feels good. It basically feels like I'm just getting started because there's a long way to go and I'm hanging out with people that are years into the game. So it feels good to have some accomplishments. You know, I've always been a performer. I've done music, I put an album in 2020. 2020? Yeah, uh, I got the cover of a magazine and. 2021 doing BMX. Um, I love being a performer. I love being on stage and it's very different doing it for comedy versus music. You know, you don't need a band. You don't need to check the PA system. You don't, you can do a sound check, but like it's a very small sound check comparatively. <laughs> so it's cool. You just bring some thoughts and hope the audience reciprocates with you. And if they do, then everybody wins and you have a good time and get out there hit as many places as you can i can't wait to hit the road and try out some places that aren't san diego i've been san diego the entire time frame been doing this so it's kind of fun to know i'll be venturing out soon and i don't know if you think that you would like to be a comedian one day then go hit an open mic and try and see uh see how it is it's gonna it's gonna take a lot of tries you know as soon as i hit 100 i was my first thought was okay i'm a tenth of the way to a thousand which is pretty cool and i don't know it feels good you know that whole saying it takes ten thousand hours to be a master of something well you know that's a lot of stage time so get started and um i suppose that is sort of putting a ribbon on this little video i am really glad that you watched it i just had this inclination that i should make a video and talk about how it feels to doing stand-up you know, I've had some really good audiences. I've had I had a show with over 200 people the other day. It was really cool. It was technically an open mic, but uh, I got my name pulled out of the bucket and did comedy for 200 people and had them all laughing. And one of the jokes I'd written two days before, and it's cool. You never really know when a joke's going to come to you. Life just happens. And that's another thing, too. You have to live your life. You have to go live a life that's worth talking about if you sit inside all day and you don't do anything how is anybody going to relate to that you know you have to do things and have a story and an experience to share with people so you know that's the 
It's a very main part of this whole thing. And make some friends, you know. I was going to a bar for a while, and I wasn't really accomplishing anything with my life. And then on my birthday, uh, I was drugged, and I blacked out. I broke my teeth, and I cut my head. And none of those people have called me to check on me or anything. You know, I learned a lot of my friends were very fake and fraudulent. So I started going to comedy clubs and I've made a lot of really, really good friends who I think actually care and I'm probably going to be friends with for a long time. And it's cool, you're all growing together. Get yourself a little gang. You know, I have a writing session with a couple buddies we're going to meet up and literally just work on material. And it's, it's cool, it sounds like fun, just going and writing and drinking coffee, hanging out, laughing. It's fun, man. Uh, highly recommend it. I I feel like it'd be silly to say I hope I become a big comedian one day. I think that's a silly goal. I just want to be authentic and I want to make people laugh. And that sounds pretty cool. Uh, I've been doing that my whole life. I have a bit where I talk about how the uh, first time I ever did stand-up was at my dad's funeral. And it's like... It's true. It's weird. When I was 14 years old, my dad died, and I had to give a speech, and I didn't know what I was going to say to any of these people. You know, can't spell funeral without fun. Am I right? See, like, that's a joke. That didn't really happen, but I had to give a speech, and I made the whole congregation laugh at a funeral of a really good friend of theirs and my dad. He was in a box in the corner, and I had people literally laughing, like, keeling over. It was weird. It was really weird. That feeling sits with me. So, there's a special kind of, like, joy in laughter that can get you through even the toughest times. Uh, you know, I miss my dad very much, and I feel that he's with me often. You know, I wear this necklace all the time. It's a little, uh, it's a little drumstick with little sticks. I took this off his deathbed when I was 14 and worn it ever since, so it's cool, man. You know, like, and that's tragic and sad, but I've made a lot of people laugh at my dead dad, <laughs> so I don't know, man. It's one of those things where you need to just find the silver lining in life and try to find the bright side. There's there's always a bright side to, to, or a silver lining to any dark cloud. It's hard to see sometimes, but comedy is a great outlet for it. And that's just my kind of regard, too. I like dark kind of humor. And you can do whatever you want. And if you don't want to do that, then don't do that. But I think this video is definitely going off the rails. Um, get on stage. Be funny. Make friends. Be a good person. And talk about what you genuinely think is funny. Um, yeah, so to the next hundred. Uh, I really appreciate you tuning into this video on the Galactic Sea Bass channel. My name is Sebastian. And, uh, I might as well show you this thing. I found this book in the street a long time ago. It's an old Home Depot book and I painted it. There's this really weird page though. And it reminds me of, uh, reminds me of that movie Joker. When he's on the stage. This says, Join Elliot for Anne Party, which is grammatically incorrect, and also one of the craziest Rorschachs I've ever seen in my life. So, uh, write your stuff down. Um, get yourself a little notebook. And write your jokes out. Your jokes are never done. You've always got work to do. Premises are endless, and they'll come to you. You never quite will know when, though, so keep your ears and eyes and senses peeled. Have fun, and uh, cheers. I spilled it all over myself. Take care.